गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल सो वेलकम टू टूडेज सेशन so yesterday we have discussed about how to do the modeling and how to do the loading and analysis part in stat pro including a dead load live load and fin load right today we can uh, discuss about how to design that using stat pro right let me share my screen am i audible if my voice is low yes ma'am yes. hope my screen is shared right okay so here uh, in this type of truss we are having two bays right bay 1 and bay 2 and along z direction you are having uh, many number of uh, trusses here in your previous class as we discussed to contract your uplift force or your suction force this bracings are introduced at the edge panels and at the at the mid panels if we want if your wind force is very high wind prone zones by the time you can include your bracings x bracings along your walls also which means eaves eaves means that the edge portion of your uh, uh, truss right fine so here we are going to do the design Yes, screen is shared, right? Fine. So this is what the dress yesterday we are worked with. Hope my screen is shared, ma'am. Ma'am, is my screen is shared? Can you see? I didn't get any response. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So in this dress yesterday we have uh, seen that you are bending moment and shear force using your MZ. So. to view your bending moment and shear force your pro program should be run so analysis should be done so analysis run analysis so once you do the run analysis your program will run and it it has to show zero errors right i put file as an edit here so in the design part we are going to design your all the members your uh, columns your bracings and also the purlins and all right and the truss uh, pitch members and all your upper cord bottom cord everything we are going to design that so for that go to commands today we are going to see the design go to commands design is there right commands design In that you can see your steel design once you click on the steel design here you can see all of your code your euro codes bs codes your is 800 is 800 2007 lsd lsd is your limit state method 
and IS 800 2007 WSD is your working stress method. Okay. So here limit state design LSD. Here you need to click it, and so that at the current code you can get IS 800 2007 LSD. And come here. Here you have to select the parameters. Select the parameters means what are the inputs you are going to give. Like concrete means you can give M20. Fe bar means that is 254 and 5500. Like that, if a uh, concrete cover or what is the main minimum reinforcement, maximum size of reinforcement to be used. Those in all, you can give and uh, select and give. In case of steel, what are all the parameters you have to? Right. So for this, your ultimate strength is important. Your yield strength is important. These are the two parameters you are going to give. Right. And your effective length, your Kx, Ky, Kz, these are also we need to give. But here going with only uh, one story of truss. So this Kx and Ky are not important for this structure. So we can directly go to your ultimate strength and your yield strength. Here you can see a few ultimate strength of steel. So select that parameter and bring it to right side. And next FYLD. FYLD is your yield strength of steel. Bring it to your right side and click OK. So now we have selected the two parameters. Those two parameters we have selected, right? But we need we haven't uh, defined it yet. Define definition means we need to give that value. What is the ultimate strength? What is the yield strength? No. So here ultimate strength. 420 MPA, right? 420 megapascal or 420 kilonewton per meter square, like that. You have to give ultimate strength. We have seen in your steel grade, right? Structural steel grade. Uh, 410, 450 was there, 530 was there. So those are all your ultimate strength in terms of kilonewton per meter square. While I'm converting to 420 newton per mm square into kilonewton per meter square, I'm getting 420 into triple zero. And next, FYLD. FYLD is your yield strength of steel. Yield strength of steel is FE 250, right? That is mild mild steel only. So 250 is the yield strength of steel. So I'm converted to kilonewton per meter square. So 250 and triple zero is the yield strength of steel in terms of kilonewton per meter square. Add. So once you add it, it will come into your workplace, right? Here you can see code 800, only FYLD is alone uh, inserted. We need to insert FU also. So FU add. So once it is added, the parameters will be inserted to your program, right? Code IS 800 LSD, FYLD, that value, FU value is inserted. So now we have selected the parameters and defined the parameters. The next step is we need to assign, right? Not only definition is sufficient, we need to assign this. So as assignment of parameters, click on this. And here your assignment method, your, uh, you know that you are assigned to selected beams, assigned to view or use cursor to assign. Here the steel grade is applicable for all the members of the structure, right? So this yield strength and your ultimate strength has to be followed for every each and every member. The strength should be followed. So you can give it as assigned to view. Right? For the entire structure, you are going to assign this grade of steel. So assign to view. Click on this and assign. Do you want to proceed with the assignment method? Yes. So once you get assigned, then all the members will be highlighted here. Next, go to FU. Assign to view and assign. Now it is also, it gets highlighted. So your entire structure is assigned with ultimate strength of steel and yield strength of steel. So definition parameters, we are known. And we have to check whether our design is correct or not. Whatever the uh, elements we have added is passing the design or not. That one we need to check. So what to do here? 
go to comments right so selected the parameters we have defined the parameters and assigned the parameters next one is comment so in this comment we can see check code so once you click this check code and add what it will do yes so it will take or uh, it will check whether the members are getting passed for your load conditions if any other member is getting failed right insufficient it will uh, show it in your output file like your beam number it is getting failed the length of the, the property of the beam, uh, beam the property of the column all the properties will be exposed in that table in that table all the members will be listed out whichever the member is getting fast what are the members are getting failed the entire table tabulation you can get it if you click the check code value and next if you want to uh, calculate the quantity right if all the members are getting passed how to calculate the quantity of the steel because you need to go and order in the market you need to uh, go and order for that uh, steel and even for a budget uh, it, how to calculate the budget of your uh, project for that you need the weight of steel going to be used in the structure so for that member take off member take off means the quantity of steel used in the structure will be calculated as a whole in terms of tons it will give so which elements split up also what are the channel members used what are the truss members used so for the bracings what is the quantity of steel so for the columns what is the quantity of steel so for member wise it will give you the quantity used in this project right so that also need to be added and member take off and the total take off is for your concrete if you want you can add it so total take off will give you the entire quantity of steel added so member take off means individual members will be added right. so here i have clicked the check code two times so i can delete one thing yes so i am having member take off now steel take off now and check code so check code has to be done for the entire members right so assign to view assign and your steel member take off all the members quantity has to be calculated individually so again assign next steel take off even you can get the entire uh, member quantity as a together as one point so go on to assign member take off alone is sufficient for you it will give you the total also so again now we are going to analyze it so design in the concrete design uh, sorry steel design is 800 2007 we have add the parameters code ultimate strength yield strength we have given and check code to check the member is getting passed or not and steel member take off and steel take off we have given right now we have to do the run analysis so once you complete the analysis in the output file you can find out so individual uh, parameters whatever we have given in the right hand side it will be uh, a different uh, table it will be shown in the output file here go and click output file done okay. so in the output file also you will be having the stat editor file and what are the outputs generated here you can click on the results so in the results you can see steel design steel take off member take off you can click on it so don't want to scroll over here here you can click on the steel design so steel design here you can check the member 1 you can check the status has pass right for the critical load case 5 so the load case 5 is the 1.5 times of dead load 1.5 times of live load and 1.2 times of wind load right for that load case it was critical but it is getting passed and member 2 here you can see the status is passed you can check here number 4 member 4 is getting failed 
status fail, which means you need to redesign it. Here it is ISMC 100, that is a channel section, it is getting failed. Member 4, 5, and yes, two members are getting failed. Member 6 got passed. And member 7, member 8 is getting failed. Member 9, 10 is. So individual uh, status of the elements, you can check it. So at what condition it is getting failed, that also it is uh, status showing in the output. Pass, pass, pass. Like that, you have to check. Next is your steel takeoff. So, this steel takeoff, member wise, it will give, right? Here, you can see member one, what is the profile or what is the section we have assigned, and what is the length of that member, and what is the weight in terms of kilonewton, 23 kilonewton. Like that, it is shown. ISMC, member wise. So, we, have, we are having around 25 members over here. Right, individual members. So, stat it will take uh, each spacing, it will take it as a one member. So, like that, 75 members you are having. So, individual weight of each element, member wise element, you can check here. And item wise, item wise means ISMC channel alone, how much length this has been used and how much weight. Right, so ST here you can see this one is 190 kilonewton. And ISMC, the total length of ISMC used here is 40 and the corresponding weight is 3. And ISA. And total takeoff you can check. So 290 tons of, sorry, 290, 209 kilonewtons. Approximately it is around 21 tons of steel. Right. So this is how you have to check up your design. So if the member that 8, 9 are getting failed means, you need to go to your, uh, here you can click on this. You'll be getting your steel labels. You don't know which number is beam 8. By the time you can click on the labels, here beam numbers. Okay. Now your beam nodes, beam numbers will be displayed. So at this time you can check which is the number 8. Still you are unable to find over here. Right. Here you can see number 8 here. Yes, double click on it. So beam number 8, ISMC 100. Still, if for a big structures, massive structures, uh, your beam numbers will be clumsy. You are unable to find out the number. So by the time click on geometry, your nodes are there, beams are there. If you click the beam numbers, now, now I'm clicking beam number 8. So it will be highlighted. You can go and check that number. If beam 10 is getting failed, I, I can click on that beam number. Here the beam number will be highlighted. I can go and check. Okay. So this ISA 100 is getting failed. So I can redesign it. Again, you need to go and go to property side and you can define a new number. ISA is getting failed means you can increase the section size. It can be ISA 200. So 100 is getting failed. So it can be ISA 200. You can change it. If you want, you can replace that section or you can add the section. Also. Right. Again, you have to analyze it. Okay. So the program will run once again. This time, you know, need to go and check your parameters, select your parameters and define your parameters. Once it is done means it is done. No need to go and define your code IS 800 LSD and your FU, FY, no need and all that. One time it is given means your stat will take automatically. Right? Here your parameters will be still there. Right? So now we can check your steel design. By this time, you can check your member 8 here. It is getting passed, right? Before that, it was failed, right? 8, member 9, your 11 and 12 are getting passed now because I have increased the section. To take care of the bending moment and shear force, the prior section ISA 100 was inadequate. So it was get failed. So once I increase the size of that section, now I'm getting the members adequate for to take care of your 
wind loads the combination wind load dead load and live load right this is how we are going to uh, take output and one more thing is here we need to check the uh, capacity foundation capacity of your structure here your stand will not give the foundation in this fashion right here we are just given a fixed support over in this model we have not modeled the foundation so to check the foundation we need to do uh, manually manual isolated foundation you can do so to how to get the results so for that you need to select the nodes so get any one side view or the front view drag over it and only the check to that only the foundation nodes has been selected in the 3d you can check so all the foundation nodes alone selected so where to get the results always your results will be in your post processing mode right here modeling mode and the fourth element is your post processing mode in post processing mode which load case i have to check your stad will ask right so for this your uh, forces in the x direction y direction your displacements will be shown here so yeah, once you click on the post processing mode your uh, tab at the top will also get changed your result no more geometry and comments will be available because those are all available in your modeling mode in post processing mode you will be getting the results and reports so in the reports go and select your support reactions so support reactions always the support reactions will be designed for the serviceability condition one times of dead load and one times of live load so first go uh, bring all the load cases to the available side and we are interested to find the foundation design for the serviceability condition so one times of dead load and one times of live load click on that here you will get the entire uh, support reactions for each node this is for the load combination 6 that is one times of dead load and live load right so force x force y force z and mx my mz so force y is there right fy so that is the vertically downward direction axial force you can say axial force for the designing of your column so it this force includes your all the load cases self weight of the member everything will be included so this axial force Uh, can be considered for your uh, foundation design by checking the sbc of your structure and the axial force you can fix the size right so sbc equal to force axial force by uh, area of your footing so your area of your footing will be axial load into sbc of the sorry so if your axial load is 61 so in uh, industry for your uh, working purpose or for your calculation purpose simply you can take as directly in 61.26 but here industry we have to take care of additional loads only if it is 61 just round it off to 65 kN so 65 kN what is the spc if the spc is 200 so 65 into 200 you will be getting the area of the footing and you can fix the size of your footing so this is how you are going to design for your uh, steel structures right and one more uh, a discussion of your uh, bending moment and shear force i need to do yes so this is the sheet i have shown in the beginning here you can check your bending moment and shear force for that you need to run the analysis so always your bending moment and shear force will be designed for your worst case of your uh, load combinations so in the trusses your worst case will be around 1.5 times of dead load 1.5 times of live load and wind load so based on the shape of your bending moment you will be giving your steel sections right in concrete wherever your bending moment is more uh, in that portion you will be giving the reinforcements and wherever your shear force is more you will be having a higher concentration of uh, stirrups ties in that area right similarly in uh, steel you are having only one element in concrete we can do both uh, reinforcement and also your concrete right so in rcc your concrete will take care of the compression and your steel will take care of your 
tension. But in steel, it is the only element is going to face your both bending moments and shear forces here. Yes. Here you can check bending moment for a load case. 1.2 times of dead load, 1.2 times of live load, and 0.6 times of dead load. I can take here MZ is there. So I've clicked on MZ. Go in the front view. Now we can have a clear view of your MZ. The shape you might have seen in your uh, structural analysis, right? So here you can see how the bending moment of the vertical member. In addition to that, you need to check your deflection also, lateral deflection. For the vertical member, you need to check the lateral deflection. And for the horizontal member, you need to uh, check with the vertical deflection, right? So this is the bending moment area. If you want to check the deflection, deflection will be checked for your serviceability condition. So if you are unable to see the deflection, you can increase the scale here. So we need to uh, click on the member. And here you can see your deflection in y direction. So if it is clicked in y direction, here it will show minus 78. So how to check with this, whether the deflection is safe or not? Here, as per our loading condition, this minus 78. But in your code, there is a limitation, right? L by 180 is there. We have checked on table. L by 180. So L by 180 is the span of the member. So the entire span you can take. Not only for this highlighted member, the entire span you can take. So for that, you can uh, maintain the, you can check your dimension from here to here. What is the dimension? It is 30 meter. So this 30 meter divided by your 180, right? So in terms of MM, you have to convert and divide it by 180. This has to be lesser than your, yes, right? This 3.55 or yeah, for this low case, 1.5 times in Y direction. Yes. So here you can see the deflection as maximum deflection is 80 mm. So 80 mm. So this 80 mm should be less than L by 180. L is your 30 meter and 180 is a, a fraction given in your code book. So if this 80 mm should be less than L by 180. If it is not, again, we need to, because your section will get fail in your uh, deflection criteria. Bending moment and shear force and all passed, but your deflection criteria, it is getting failed. By the time, if you are increasing the depth of the section or increasing the thickness of the section, your member can get passed. Okay. So this is how your uh, member has to be designed. And you can see the bending moment and shear force. Here, you can, yeah, you can see the major bending moment here. If you want to see the values, you can go loads and results. So this icon, you have to click this one, just click it. And here you can see the scales, labels. Labels means you can get your beam numbers and node numbers. Scales, you can increase or reduce the scale. And loads and results. View value. Go to post-processing mode. Results, view value, you can Check with your beam results. Here, the maximum bending moment, if you click and annotate, it will ask you to click on the bending moment here. Right? So for only one, any one of the beam, I'm, uh, here for the entire, bend, entire structure, your bending moment is shown. If I'm clicking for any one member, I have to select it. Select only one member alone, right? Go to 3D, only one member alone selected here, right? Go to view, new view. New view means that member alone come into your picture, not all the members. Right? Now I've given the bending moment here. So 
here you can see the bending moment maximum at the bottom it is 265 and at the top you are getting 532 this is for your 1.5 times of dead load and live load case for the wind load what is the maximum value you have to see so here for this bending moment here your section is very much less your bending moment is very much less here you are having a very higher bending moment right so your steel whatever you are using is uniform throughout it's isotropic right uniform throughout from the bottom to top it is a simple i section so for this i section uh, will be same for the entire column from bottom to top right but it is of use it is of uh, waste of material because here only you need a higher section the here we are having the maximum section for this m532 only we will be designing your i section that will be employed for the entire section it is of waste of uh, steel steel is measured in terms of tons so economy will be affected so your project will be at the higher end the cost of your project will be higher so what to do that so to reduce the uh, reduce the economy without compromising the strength right strength is the major criteria strength and safety so without compromising the strength and safety we need to reduce the section so what to do here we need a higher uh, deeper section right so the deeper section we have to give so here we are having the less bending moment so here you can have a deeper section at the bottom we can have a where cross section is very less lesser cross section can be adopted over here so how to accommodate it whether it is possible yes it is possible in steel we are doing molding only like a concrete we are having in situ molding but steel at the factories we will be doing the molding so while molding stage manufacturing stage itself not a molding it's manufacturing while manufacturing stage itself we can give a tapered section tapered section means here you can see yeah in this you can see so tapper section means here you will be having the uh, bigger depth 0.75 mm it is slowly getting reduced and at this edge you are having the very smaller section over here right so this 0.75 it will be placed upside down so at the top you will be having this 0.75 and at the bottom you will be having the smaller section so this 0.75 will take care of this 532 of bending moment at the bottom you are having the very lesser bending moment so you can uh, it can take tackle this 265 right and here you can see yes so here also it's loading here also you are getting a, a tapered section to tackle the higher bending moment at the mid portion So here you are having higher bending moment. So once you click on the section, you can get 0.9 over here and tap the section. So based on the profile of your bending moment, you can vary the cross section of your structure. This, so the steel design is in our hand so that we can reduce it and we can increase wherever we want so that we can get an economical design of steel. So now just keep in mind this uh, profile of this uh, bending moment right here you are having higher cross section here at this end you are having higher cross section at the middle you are having higher uh, cross section because based on the bending moment right and at the top of your truss the pitch portion at the bottom you will be having the lesser sections just keep in mind this profile alone right now your uh, pre engineered building emerges pre engineered building means based on the requirement of the uh, industry only for a feeble bending moment we are giving a bigger structures right so to avoid that we are going for a economical design that helps in the arising of your uh, peb structures so this peb structure here you can see the uh, cross section of the uh, peb i'll show you I 
can yes now you can see right at the bottom you are, you, are, you got a very lesser uh, size of bending moment at the top you got a maximum bending moment so at this point alone you are increasing the cross section of your structure right here and all it get tap out. tap pad means the same element the cross section alone it has been reduced over here and wherever your bending moment is major that portion your structure cross section has been increased and wherever it is not required only minimum size of the structure uh, cross section alone employed so this the overall cost of your project get reduced and your overall usage of steel get reduced and in the meantime your dead weight or your self weight of the structure get reduced once the self weight get reduced your foundation will become a um, economical design so once a member has been reduced in its size based on the bending moment and shear forces you can get a larger economy economical structure right uh, just hold on a minute Sorry for the interruption. Now I can show the 3D view of this element. We have given a, a, a tap pad section. So now we can see here. I have zoomed it, right? Can you see the section get tapered? So here you are having the bigger size and slowly it is getting reduced. Here you are having the smaller size of the section. And in this structure, we got a big higher moments over at the center. So the center you are having the uh, bigger cross section to take care of your uh, bending moments. And slowly it gets tapper. And again, at the junction, your bending moment got increased. So you are having a bigger section. Right? So this is how your PEB structures are going to mm, rule the uh, steel industry because of its effective design and its uh, lesser weight. So now come to our PPT. So here, all the entire element or the entire truss can be uh, molded from your uh, factory based on the size. Why it is called as pre-engineered? So before uh, manufacturing itself, we are fixing the dimensions, right? In your concrete or your reinforcing steel or your available steel sections, right? In your steel table, ISMC, IS100, ISA100, 200 and all, it is readily available in the market. Based on our design, we are choosing those elements, right? But this PEB, from our design, we can fix the uh, required cross-section of that element or required size of that element. So that element can be ordered at the manufacturing site based on our requirement. Those people will manufacture it and they'll deliver at the site. So it is called as pre-engineered. Before manufacturing itself, we are fixing the size of the members. Right. So this uh, picture will depict you the uh, PB structure. It's having your column, your rafter, and all. Right. So this PEB structures or will be engineered at the factory itself. So engineered at the factory means based on the sizes, we are going to give the order to the factory. So build up sections will be fabricated at the uh, factory to the exact size. So based on the design, whatever we have given, that alone they will be uh, manufactured, right? the steel manufacturing. And those manufactured built up sections will be delivered to the site. So at the site, they will be assembled. So transportation, your erection, all the roles will be played at the assembling at the site. So at the site, we can go for your bolted connections. The main important thing of this pre-engineered building is mostly, if it is a permanent building, they'll be going for a 
uh, welded connections else for the, they'll go for a bolted connections because your uh, assembling of your joints will also be easy here more than welding your bolted connections will be very faster and you can at lesser precautions you can finish off this bolted connections right so in case of warehouses canopies canopies your floating roof at the entrance of a hotel or at the entrance anywhere you'll be having the floating roof that is your canopies factories and bridges you can find the usages of your a pre-engineered building so the components we have seen now so this is your primary frame or the main frame this one this is your main frame and the main frame is your eye sections or a channel section it can be tapered based on the design it can be tapered along with the truss so together with your column and the uh, sloped member along with the truss it can be manufactured like this or sometimes if you want a connection separate connection over here this element alone uh, will be manufactured separately and this horizontal member will be manufactured separately and they will be connected using bolted sections and secondary elements are your purlins so purlins uh, your coal form members uh, we have already discussed about this coal form members based on your requirement you can reduce the cross section like a lathe you can reduce your cross section so your finishing will also be good for your cold formed members and the strength wise it will perform better than your hot roll sections and most probably it is very lightweight so different types of uh, z sections z shaped sections c shaped sections can be achieved for your purlins right and panels so the roof panels and wall panels you can uh, create for your uh, pv structure if in in terms of your sheets right gi sheets ai sheets you can have or if based on your requirement of your building or based on the functionality of your building it can be made of glass or wood okay? and for the roof and for the uh, uh, floor panels you can have a sandwich panel sandwich panel means your non aluminium core like a zigzag zigzag will be having a top panel and a bottom panel in between the top and the bottom you'll be having a non aluminium uh, core it will be inserted between the uh, aluminium sheets and other accessories of your mezzanine floors bowls and insulations all these are all the components of your pv your primary frame secondary elements your panels sandwich panel for your floors and accessories accessories includes your bowls and insulations right yeah so here in this picture you can see the tapered section which is manufactured at site and uh, manufactured at uh, factory and assembled at the site so here the main advantage is quality control so the pev structures you can achieve a higher quality because it's the first thing is your steel steel it's a homogeneous material you can very well maintain your quality rather than your concrete you have to keep an eye on your water aggregates cement and all but in pev only thing you have to concentrate is your steel and the perfect shape right and the same uh, content of steel is going to be used for all the members so the quality can be very well maintained at the manufactured site and also at the assembling point at the site during the assemblation or during the erection you can go for the bolted connections so bolted connections you can go uh, it very faster means of connection and also uh the less uh, labor is required less skilled the labor for welded connection we need a skilled the labor but for bolted connection where less skilled uh, labor is sufficient to do the erection right and the lower cost lower cost we have just now discussed based on the section size your uh, weight of the steel will get reduced once steel get reduced your self weight get reduced so that the foundation will get reduced so overall cost of the project will get reduced if you are going to use a pv structures right so and minimizing the time of construction so we are if you are going for a concrete we need to shutter it for that one day and for concreting it will take another day and for removal of shutters the shuttering it will take around four, 14 days so for one month you can't go near that building for a next activity but for this pv within a day you can assemble the entire spot based on the area of your uh, factory or your building so minimizing time of construction and low maintenance low maintenance in the sense just the painting alone is sufficient 
right yes and quicker erection and low maintenance in the sense your bolted connection where and all your bolted connections are there that one need a periodic maintenance just you need to check the connectivity that's all because everything is a molded one so a molded at the factory itself so minimum number of connections so minimum number of maintenance and quicker erection so the number of individual members are less because the entire thing is molded at the factory so number of members are less so you can do the faster connection also and warranty on PV, PEB compared to your uh, steel structure this is also will perform better right but not uh, up to the level of concrete because it is uh, not it's not having a cover over here once if you maintain the quality at the manufacturing uh, place itself the entire quality of the building will be good if the thing quality control is not maintained at the uh, manufacturing factory then uh, the quality will affect in each and every stage of your performance of PEB build and here also you can see the uh, tapered sections so in PEB you are going to use the tapered sections based on your requirement as like your concrete it is not having the cover so it is prone to corrosion very fast just we are going to do the painting alone no other extra care so you can do corrosion resistant paint but even to the environmental condition and the exposures your uh, steel will get corroded so it's one of the disadvantage and insulation cost so insulation cost you are you are using thin roof sheets right here over those you are having thin roof sheets but in case of concrete building you are having a solid slab it will resist some uh, temperature effects and all it will provide insulation automatically but here you need to have a proper insulation because your thin roof sheets alone can't uh, resist your temperature uh, and all so you need a fall ceiling and if it is an auditorium and thing you need a uh, acoustic effect walls and roofs and all. so insulation causes more here and your appearance your appearance is uh, like a skeleton right if it is uniform it will be of good uh, structure just like a skeleton uh, it will appear and here i can show you the pre-engineered buildings that is has been uh, or your steel buildings assembled at our site in Jacob Engineers. So this is a site showing a brick manufacturing unit. Here you can see the truss. We have used uh, tube sections, tubular uh, bottom cord and tubular top cord. And for the members also, we are having a smaller tubes. Right? So it, the span wise, you can see here. So only it is support like a one way slab, it is supported at the edges alone the entire run you don't have any intermediate support and this is one of the tile warehouse where we have used our pre-engineered building concept here you can see the tapper section and the bolted connections here how the longer member and the adjacent members are being connected using these bolts here and you can see the purlins also here you can see so it's a tiles warehouse at Coimbatore so the clear span is wrong 32 meters here you can see check the span here so uninterrupted workspace you can achieve by means of steel structures and now this PEV are performing uh, good at market so for warehouses and for factories it's uh, very much uh, recommended and here is the me mezzanine floor at Estancia so mezzanine floor is an intermediate floor over here so the Estancia SRM you might have seen right near Katangalapu, Estancia Tower. There you can see your uh, steel connections with your concrete, how it is attached, the bolted connections. And it's our PEB structure. Sorry. Yes. It's having a series of purlins to support your uh, roof this is the first one you can see the uh, erection state first this uh, columns have been erected and the skeleton of the truss right once all the skeletons are inserted then they are going to lay the purlins here you can see the purlins how they are laying And in this first picture, you can see the completion of purlin installations and roof sheets also placed. 
here you can see uh, in on the roof sheets they are having the uh, glass provisions also so that at the daytime you can use the maximum usage of light over here so for that in your truss alone we can achieve your north light roof truss using that alone you can achieve this uh, daylight uh, usage but in peb the horizontal flat roofs also you can achieve this by using a glass plate over a small stretch this is the outer view you can check the wall panels are here wall panels and roof panels are placed so it is a finished uh, entire peb structure and here is the truss which is uh, used for your aqu aqua minerals factory here the span is around 25 meters clear span here also they have used the pipe uh, sections and uh, uh, bracings for pipe here to avoid the deflection of that member here you can see the x bracing over the roof in this picture you can see to check your uplift your suction pressure and to avoid deflection they are having the x bracings on the roof i have shown in your uh, uh, stat pro right at the x bracing so here they have achieved a clear span of 25 uh, meters and at alvin school we had a, a central auditorium like entrance so here how the stresses are being initially uh, formed the skeleton how it is formed is the first step and your uh, lateral purlins are installed over here here the inside view of that uh, truss you can see so at the entrance uh, to want uh, aesthetic appearance this design has been suggested so here your purlins are in this fashion right? and the roof sheeting material also covered over here Yes. So this is the inner view. Here you can see the aesthetic outside view of that uh, uh, structure. So to enhance the daylight usage, we have inserted the glass panels over here and a roof covering over this. So here at the junction of these two slopes, we are having a roof covering so that your rainwater penetration can be avoided. And this is the auditorium uh, in Zion School. So your maximum span of 90 feet with the interconnected purlins. So here the span is high. Here, for that we are having the interconnected purlins. So the total area of the auditorium is 6,500 square feet with a seating capacity of 500 persons. So this large span, uninterrupted span, can be achieved by using a smaller uh, tubular sections. You can say, check the cross section of this one tubular section just to support the roof but all these are checked under the wind load criteria whether it is passing the wind load criteria or not that one will be checked so here yes so this is one more uh, structure in sembakam the same zion school at sembakam here you can see that corridor with eye, eye sections of the rafters and panels purlins are attached here here the installation also you can see how it is being executed at site. And so this is how your uh, steel structures are being uh, manufactured and how it has been designed. So we have discussed about the design methodology and uh, stat pro how we are going to design how to take the steel takeoff how to study the bending moments and how to assign the structures and how to redesign it if any, any members get failed and the peb structure introduction and also our how it is uh, installed at site also i have explained so just uh, i want to explain a training program that is uh, with that we the jacob engineers are uh, handling Yes. 
So we are the specialized in uh, uh, structural engineering uh, company, specialized in uh, structural consultancy. So we do multiple projects across your uh, construction industry, like residential, commercial, and uh, uh, industry buildings. Uh, not only that, we are going for the school constructions, hospitals, all the uh, public uh, buildings are also under our uh, construction stream. So we do provide your structural uh, designs at your valuable uh, based on your uh, Indian standard codes and specifications. And we also do your uh, non-destructive testing. So non-destructive testing, you might know, without disturbing the structure, we can check the uh, stability of the structure. And based on that uh, results, we can achieve the, uh, we can give certification to the buildings, whether it is stable or not. So we do our expertise in st uh, structural engineering in all major uh, uh, functionality of their buildings. So he is a Mr. Uh, C.B. Jacob, and he is the one, the main driving force of uh, Jacob Engineers, who expertise in your cost planning and commercial management of entire projects life cycle so he's a graduate from iit delhi mtech uh, he completed in iit delhi and btech in anna university and he's pursuing his phd in soil structure interaction also and uh, yes we offer your structural engineering services which includes your designs of your building and structural health assessment like ndt techniques and peer review and construction and retrofitting and rehabilitation also we do take care. And these are our special uh, projects at Estancia, Mezzanine Floor, and Innovation Center. These are all our, our key projects. At Russell Delta, you can see at the near Hindu Mission Hospital. And few of your uh, institutional projects are like Olive Tree and Alvin International School, the commercial projects. And residential projects at Ananagar and uh, Senbakkam. These are our clients, your JLL, Loka, KAG Tiles, your Zion School, Zoho, Nova Infrastructures, Olive Tree. These are all our clients. So we contact our employability enhancement course in structural engineering. Mainly we do uh, training for uh, MTech students only. But based on the interest of uh, BTEC students or BE civil engineering students, if they are very uh, passionate towards uh, engineering that to learn the design concepts, you are very well welcome. Uh, but we'll be conducting an interview and then only we'll be uh, uh, enrolled to the design course. Mostly we do, uh, we offer uh, this course for the MTech students, right? But if you are passionate towards the design learning concepts, uh, you are very uh, you can contact ruby ma'am i'll send a link to her so that you can register the form uh, we'll conduct interview and we can enroll under this course right so this course why we are conducting the need for the program is to very well bridge the gap between your academics and also to the industry so whatever in many many areas you can see whatever we have studied is entirely different at the industry no the basic is same everywhere, but the uh, methods what you are following in the industry alone different, right? So all the basics what you are learning as per your syllabus is very much useful to you if you are uh, entering into the same civil engineering industry, not to IT, right? So to that too, we are having small gaps. Why? What is the uh, gap means? Here in your problems, in your analytical subjects, you'll be strictly using whatever the value is coming over there, right? That alone is the answer. But that why uh, the difference in uh, industry is, we will be rounding off to the nearest values or due to some side conditions, that design may not be adoptable. By the time we can use some thumb rules, right? So what are the uh, shortcuts we are using uh, in the designs and also at the execution site? That is the small gap between the industry and the academic. But the basic concept wise, everything is same from college to industry. If these are your course features, this course feature is not given by an university or IIT and all. So this is the uh, curriculum. It's a, framed by uh, industry experts, exclusively by the industry experts. 
so where your uh, college students are lagging lagging so how to uh, enrich their skills see you have already studied your btech of four years so if you are fine tuned so that you will be a perfect fit for the industry and we do offer your professional experience on live projects not like a problem uh, taken from a book or a uh, referred from uh, any uh, iit and all we do projects on live uh, projects right so you will be uh, enter you will be entering the company just like an employee not like a trainee because you are working on a live projects so uh, will be giving training on the live projects only so that you can feel the heat of the uh, industry how much you have to be responsible towards the industry so everyone you can learn only if you are enrolled in a live project so we will be uh, giving you the training in the live projects only and we have the technical walk through many manufacturing plants will be taking to like your uh, uh, industrial visits are there right similarly we are having our own manufacturing plants and all so there we will be taking you so that you can uh, really what the ma uh, manufacturing plants are doing how they are maintaining the quality that one you can understand from this and hands on practical exercise on your real project you can do for your stat modeling how to study a uh, uh, architectural drawing where to fix a beam and column and how to design it in stat pro and once you are getting the design either it's a steel or concrete your output should be given to the draft person so that they can bring it to a perfect shape and it will be delivered to site and executed over there so hands on practical exercise will be there and we, we are having a multi disciplinary industrial specialist in our company for your uh, ndt uh, foundation experts the geotechnical experts and anti termite treatments and concrete experts are there and steel ar steel experts are here so every every day one one industrial experts will be visiting to the office and they will be explaining what are the real challenges they have faced in the uh, site so if they are explaining so in the meantime once you are uh, entered into a project in a company if you are facing the same challenge you can employ the solution what they have provided so the knowledge and the experience whatever they have gathered will be shared in the uh, Uh, knowledge sharing sessions that is the discussion with multidisciplinary so here mostly the course eligibility is first we are restricting to master degree in structural engineering but if if any of your friends or your seniors those who are uh, completed be degree with an experience and of 2 years those are those candidates are also welcome to the uh, training program and if you are having a strong passion really i want to learn the design i want more uh, knowledge in the design fact uh, area you are also welcome so the course duration is 6 months from june to december hope you are uh, third year uh, students right then you uh, you'll be eligible in the next year only so if you have a contact with your seniors just uh, explain to them right just to make you aware that this kinds of prog uh, programs are available in industry i am showing this it will be useful for your next year but you can share with your friends and seniors also so we do the entire training program will be having your interactive sessions knowledge session chat by the industry experts live designing tasks on site activities industrial visits and real project experience so where and all you are giving the training we will be giving in the three modules that is in the stream of structural engineering geotechnical and construction management So in model in the structural engineering we are uh, discussing with your architecture drawings that is the input to the uh, civil engineer so how uh, to the structural engineer how the beams and column has to be located based on the soil report how the foundation should be fixed up and how to frame the structure whether it is a load bearing structure or a, a concrete frame structure or a steel frame structure that one itself it will take two weeks of time how to frame a structure right and the structural planning your manual load calculations and training on your software like stat pro and etaps and based on the analysis how your stru uh, structural elements has to be designed 
right and preparation of your design basis report and design of steel structures will be good in modules in geotechnical engineering how to study the geotechnical report given by the uh, earth scientist and soil structure interaction we need to know so fix up the based on the number of stories and soil condition you have to fix up the foundation and founding depth and all so different types of foundations also included and modules in your construction management not only office experience alone will, will not help you without the uh, knowledge of site so on site experience how they are maintaining the concrete quality in the site quality control inspection and structural auditing how to do in all the streams we'll be doing giving the training so once this course is completed you'll be able to design the structural system with uh, great confidence and you can uh, you can implement your modern techniques which are shared by the industrial experts in your real time practice and you can take up your live project challenges in your structural engineering field and you can very well suggest solutions to your uh, geotechnical issues and structural design issues and all you can choose an alternate method alternate solution for the real time problem if you are very well trained and you are practicing good you are you can get a confidence and you will be fit to establish your own consultancy firm and you can lead a construction bureau okay. so these are the highlights of our program and if you are interested uh, i'll share you the uh, link with ruby ma'am she will distribute so that uh, once you fill the google form you can uh, uh, come for an interview okay yes and you'll be having one more session uh, let me discuss with uh, my boss mr cb jacob whether he is uh, ready to uh, anyway he'll be coming uh, in person to you right he'll visit your campus and uh, he'll be uh, discussing or he'll share his knowledge towards uh, civil engineering that to on steel structures okay so that's all for uh, today's session Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ruby, ma'am, and thank you, students, and thank you, faculty members of Civil Engineering Department. And uh, I need to thank uh, Dr. Kumuda, ma'am, HOD of Civil Engineering, and my boss, Mr. C. B. Jacob, for uh, this opportunity to share the knowledge on steel structures with these uh, wonderful kind of students. Thank you so much. Yeah.